Hi guys, welcome to the Reach 3D Printer Carriage Assembly. I went ahead and got out all the components for the carriage in the user manual. You'll notice there's a parts list. A carriage plate, um, plastic parts, nuts, bolts, these are the V-wheels, some electronic components, some nuts. So get all those separated out first and then start your build. To start, I would recommend, and you might want to do this with all V-wheels, to begin with, um, taking your V-wheels, your bearings, and pushing the V-wheels on top of the bearings. So you got four wheels, throwing the washers in there. Make sure the washers sit all the way down and aren't up on the little inner lip there. And then the bearings go in on top of all that. All right, so I always prep my V-wheels first. And then, um, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to secure the belt block using some M3 by 20s, I believe. I'm gonna secure this belt block, this plastic piece. M3 by 20s through the back side. into the carriage plate two m3 by or two m3 nuts a lot of this can be done by hand and then just a quick tightening up with pliers This has to be pretty snug. I don't have to crank them down or anything. If you go too tight, you'll actually suck these bolts into the plastic, so don't get ridiculous with it. Uh, so the next step is um, insert two M5 by 60 bolts into the top or into your wheels. So slide them through there. Um, you may have a washer kind of in the way, so make sure that you kind of twist it and it will go through. So go ahead and throw those in. It can be a little tricky to get in there, but we're going around a little bit. It should go through. And then you're going to add quarter inch spacers. And then come through the plate from the back. Check. Next, come in. Yeah, make sure I read that. Insert two M5 by 25s through the two wheels. Oh, quarter inch spacers, then carriage plate, then clamp. All right, so the next thing is the clamp. All right, after that, we're going to take. <laughs> I got a phone call. We're going to take uh, the two shorter M5 bolts, M5 by um, 25s and do two spacers we're gonna put these in the bottom of the carriage plate like so hopefully you guys can see all that we're gonna hold all these together two and five nuts at the bottom Uh, snug them up a little bit. They don't have to be super tight or anything, just so that they don't fall out. Okay, next step is to um, we're going to start with the electronics now. We're going to remove this connector. Um, the future um, setup might be different. You may not have a connector to remove, but Basically, you can just remove these. By lifting the DuPont pins, you can lift those little tabs, pull those out. Then, this is your limit switch housing. So, get your limit switch wires 
uncurled, make sure there's no knots or twists or problems. Take your limit switch housing. These may have to be bent. There may be a different solution that makes this a lot easier in the future, but for the time being, um, we've drilled these out, but they should be larger as well. We've just drilled those out with a three millimeter drill bit. Um, hmm. So if they have a very slight bend to them, very slight bend, just don't over work them. Oh, black goes in the top. Black and red, like so. Slide them through. You get the point. To get them seated properly, they are going to, that switch is going to need to go pretty darn far in to make it almost perfectly flush. You can see how close to flush that is. That should do it. All right. So this would go on next. This wires face towards the wheels. I should kind of lift up something like that. The next step would be put on your hot end. Your hot end, we'll go ahead and go through that really quick. Hot end comes in a few pieces. I might go further in detail down the road, but this is your Teflon lined threaded heat break. Some people call it a throat, some call it a threaded barrel. This is your heat sink, heater block, cartridge, thermistor has the Teflon, the white wires, heater cartridge supplies your power, nozzle. Um, so if your nozzle is threaded in all the way, Teflon is used for PLA only. Um, then you should be able to just thread those together. Make sure they're good and snug. Otherwise, you're going to have oozing. So tighten them up like that. Slide it in like so. Next, you're going to put the next clamp down. So the switch gets sandwiched between the clamps on one side. You can also, at this point, install the fan. I think it comes through from this side. Some of these might be a little tight to get through. It looks like it's pretty snug. These are M3x16s. Go through the back of the fan. Make sure the fan um, with the sticker is the direction it blows. So, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, fan. Um, also having a, this is an 2.5, is the size needed to tighten the M3 nuts. All right. Um, Actually, that fan should have gone on different. Let's try this again. Might be easier to do something like. I would actually recommend putting the the wire up top like that. But it's a little closer. I'm threading it through. If your M3 nuts are already in the fan. Casing might be a little easier that way. Alright, so then your fan's done. It should look something like this. Alright, guys, we're back with the proximity sensor. Um, proximity sensor is used for like a Z probe, so it just senses when it comes close to a metal plate. Um, we custom made these. There are two resistors in here creating a voltage divider 
since the 12 volts supplied is too high we need to um, drop down the output voltage to like five or six something like that um, so anyways to install it you want to take the proximity sensor clamp small side come in through the bottom of the hole this is your power supply from the 12 volt this is your ground and signal wire that goes into the ramps board so this will just slide up and you might have to pry these apart there could be a should be a sticker on here you have to pry the clamp apart a little bit gently might help if you use flathead screwdriver put it in there and make sure there's a little bit of smoothness still showing that's about right we'll have to adjust this later in tuning take the number four wood screw and this is used in the bottom hole of the proximity clamp proximity sensor goes on the left side right here the hot end you may want to get this pretty close but the hot end oops, see it notice how that came loose you may have to triple check that that's fully tight um, hot end wires might go like that direction Tight. Oh, this wire's not going. Okay. All right. I prefer the wires to be coming from the other angle. If this is the case, you may want to remove your thermistor and your heater cartridge. You put them in on that side. I prefer them to be coming out the left. So you might want to double check that. And that would be using the smallest, I think 1.5 Allen screw. So that's how I like the wires to run. Then you can go ahead and put a M5 nut. And then the fan goes that way. M5 nut. Now if you're noticing on the table, we're pretty much running out of parts. Oop, I got this little DuPont connector. So that originally, if you removed it, if it was part of the kit, you want to clip that back in. Red and black, it's irrelevant, as long as they're both on one side. Because as far as the XY limit switches, um, all you're doing is shorting the two wires out using the switch. So red, black, doesn't matter. Um, if they're switched or if they're on this side or that side down to one set of parts you've got a uh, m16 by or m3 by 16 and a nut so that's going to go in here on the belt block so there should be a little recess I've added that little m3 nut recess in there to make this easier to start. It might take a try or two, but you may have to. I'm trying to use gravity to my advantage, but it's my disadvantage currently. Uh, let's see. I have to use needle nose pliers as I did in the first setup. All right, let's try it that way. Try it with needle nose pliers. I thought I could do it that way quickly, but needle nose pliers, grab your M3 nut, put it in the recess. Yeah, maybe not. Well, nothing's gonna be easy that's difficult. <laughs> Instead of messing with the recess, I think what we'll do is just thread that bolt on through until it comes out past the recess. All we have to really do is get this thing threaded. 
And once you got it threaded onto the nut, you're good. There it is. good ah. all right guys um, <laughs> cut the last part all right the final trick of the puzzle is the belt block holder this bolt belt or bolt has to travel through this belt block holder easily if it doesn't you may have to get a drill bit around three millimeters and make sure that you have hopefully I'll open these up in the model I'll remember to I'm gonna make sure there's enough room this bolt can travel freely through here like that all right so as long as that travels freely through here then we hope <laughs> we hope that if we get that m3 nut set down in the recess of the belt block yeah it's kind of hard to see sorry guys if you get it set down in the recess just right you should be able to thread the bolt on once it's nice and flat in there. There it goes. Okay, so we've got the bolt threaded through the nut. The nut gets retracted into the recess of the belt block holder. Check. The last thing is you're going to need a belt on here. If you notice, it came with one long belt. This belt will have to be cut, so you'll definitely want to have a meter stick or something to measure with specifically millimeters i prefer and that's it um this is the carriage build hope you guys enjoyed um you can go ahead and kind of tighten a few things up here and there you can collect all the wires together use the proximity this thing kind of just gets put on hold for a little while get all the wires collected out of the way tighten these up a touch we will fine-tune the positioning of the wheels and all of that in a little bit that's pr probably on final assembly um, we kind of snuck stuff up just so it's a solid there it is guys carriage <laughs>